Hello, and welcome to the brand new Tech Check set. After how successful the first episode was, we finally got the budget to add a floating TV. Well, it's October, and that means Halloween is right around the corner. Our first segment is about the makeup artist Nadia Garver and how she can transform a normal person into a flesh-eating zombie. Let's take a look at this Halloween makeover. Today I'm going to do a short and easy makeup tutorial on torn flesh. To create this torn up zombie look, you'll need these materials. Light cover up, red lipstick, eyeshadow palette, makeup sponges, lip gloss, tissues or toilet paper, bottle glue, and makeup or paint brushes. I start to build the wound by putting the glue on the outline I drew. Layer more glue with a brush to smooth it. Over the glue, I place the pre-torn and separated tissues. I prefer to do two or three layers. Adding lip gloss helps create the illusion of realistic moisture. Tightly roll tissue and stick inside the wound. Polish it off by adding cover up over the torn tissue and adding more reds blacks to the crevices to make it more elaborate. Around the wound, add purples, greens, and yellows for bruising. Around the wound, add purples, greens, and yellows for bruising. Add stage blood to the wound and let it drip down, then you're done. Wow, that was disgusting. In a good way, of course. A little background information about Nadia is that she works on a haunted trail and does makeup for their employees. And all this talk about Halloween is making me hungry for some candy. Hello, John here. So it's Halloween and studies have shown that the amount of candy consumed during this time of the season is, is just in high quantities. It's no other numbers compared to how high these numbers are. So I gotta ask you, with all this candy being consumed, what's the favorite? What's that candy everyone loves? I'm gonna give you some clues right now. The company of this candy bar has been in business since 1928. It has its own holiday that people go into their houses, they, they have the school day off, it's a big deal, memorial services, bands play, they get the high school bands in, parades are held. Can you guess it? This is your time. Can you guess what candy bar is America's favorite? Drum roll. <laughs> the battery's low. It is recent. Hey, hey, I feel you. No, no, no. You got the peanut butter mixed up. You're, well, you're very. I was thinking of peanuts. I was, you know, I was you're like, peanut butter curious. I That's all you are. Thanks for watching. Did you know? Reese's are the best, hands down. You can't beat peanut butter and chocolate. It's a fact. How about we go over to JJ, who's on location at the Blue Water Film Festival, or at least I think he is. This place looks familiar. I know it does. But this is still definitely not McMahon. I feel like I'm getting close. Hi, I am JJ Cabo, and we're here at the Blue Water Film Festival, and we are here to check out some awesome movies today, so let's go in. I am here.
Kelly Kennedy. And what is your role in the Blue Water Film Festival? Um, I am the Vice President of the Board of Directors and Film Selection Chairwoman for the festival. Okay, and how many years have you been involved in it? Um, I'm one of the co-founders of the festival, so I've been here for all five years. This is my fifth year. And what does the Blue Water Film Festival do as a Blue Water Area attraction every year? Okay, well, I think that the Blue Water Film Festival brings people from outside the community into the community, and it also, um, you know, really does uh, influence our local economy. Uh, we have people staying in our hotels, people staying in our and eating in our local restaurants and shopping in the downtown. So, you know, we're, we're helping invest in the local economy. We're also providing an arts and culture service to our community residents by showcasing films that they wouldn't normally see in a regular movie theater. So I think that all around we're a signature event for our community for both people locally and a destination for folks coming from outside of our area. We are outside the Blue Water Film Festival and I am here with Jeremy Steeman. And your role in the Blue Water Film Festival is? I'm the executive director of the Blue Water Film Festival which basically entitles uh, or rather uh, I oversee everything. Yeah, so what does it take for a movie to be entered inside of it? Well, we have two requirements that either it needs to be shot in Michigan or Ontario or uh, needs to be the filmmaker is from Michigan or Ontario. I am officially here at the Blue Water Film Festival. I'm about to watch over 20 incredible movies that they have to offer. So, let's go in. And what is your role in the Blue Water Film Festival? I'm one of the filmmakers. I had a film uh, show earlier today. The film was called Broadcast from Voyager Prime. Now, what was your favorite scene or movie? Uh, I tell you, I've been impressed by a lot of the films so far. Uh, but I just, the screening I just uh, came out from, one of the films was called Down River. And I thought that was a really nice film. Like, very good all around. Production quality was great. Acting was great. The story was awesome. Very, very solid piece. And what is your role? in the movie. Okay. I was the producer for um, Down River, um, which is a Michigan-made film. And what is your favorite scene of the movie? Um, my favorite scene was when Alex was sitting at the family dining table and he um, realized that he was eating muskrat soup. That was my favorite part of the movie. Okay, well, um, how long did it roughly take for the movie? Pre-production took approximately three months, um, and we shot for, I believe, it was 22 straight days, so a little over three weeks for the actual filming of the film. Right, well, thank you so much. I am JJ Calvo, and this was the 2013 Blue Water Film Festival. I've seen some amazing movies, but all things must come to an end, so let's rock and roll. Thanks JJ, the Blue Water Film Festival was really good this year, and I'd say my favorite short film would have been Down River, but those other ones were pretty awesome too. Let's check out some horror videos by the students here at Tech.
Here at Tech Check, we hope your Halloween is full of treats, but not tricks. Here are some Halloween safety tips. Hello, it's your Tech Check pals, Vince and John. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Vince, are you going trick-or-treating this year? Yes, I am. Oh, that that's cool. You know, you gotta be safe this Halloween when you go out trick-or-treating. You can't, you can't be just running around not knowing what you're doing because this is a very serious time of the year. My first tip for you, Vince, is that any masks that you may wear, I don't care if you're a Power Ranger, I don't care if you're Batman, those eye holes need to be wide enough for you to see through because sight is as important as breathing the air around you. Well, I was gonna go as Iron Man. Well, they gotta be cut. You can get scissors, safety scissors are recommended. Next here, make sure to wear bright costumes because when you're out at night and it's dark, cars, they're gonna be rolling through, bumping their tunes, and they're gonna be like, yo man, look at that bumblebee over there. What a cute little bumblebee. They're gonna see you. You're not gonna get hit. You know, John, I got a tip for you. Oh, really? Yeah, I do. Why don't you have a planned route of the streets and houses that, you're, that you'll feel safe enough to visit? Like my next door neighbors and stuff like that? Well, yeah, that's safe. I mean, if you know them. Vince, another thing is, you also gotta examine suspicious candy. Look for holes in the wrappers and make sure those Reese's are filled with peanut butter and not something that, well, will make you pass out on their front porch. Lastly, make sure that the houses have their lights on. You're gonna walk up and there's gonna be no one home. You might get a bark from a dog. That dog's not gonna get you candy. So watch for that, make sure the lights are on, and that's all I have to say. Just have a happy Halloween, Vince. I want you safe. And from everybody here at Tag Check, have a very safe and fun Halloween. Let's take a brief break for a word from our advertiser, the Tech Snack Shop. I'm gonna get some snacks, only got 50 cents in my pocket. I'm hungry, looking for some chocolate. This food is so awesome. Nah, walk up in the comments like, what up, I got a big cup. I'm so pumped up about the fries from the snack shop. Ice in my fridge, my water is so frosty that people like, whoa, that's a real hot coffee. Come on down to the snack shop located in the comments. We sell fries, cookies, pop, and much more for prices comparable to your local thrift shop. Hey, welcome to Media Time. I'm Vince, and today I'm talking about the Grand Theft Auto server problems. Ah, uh, let's see. It seems to be like a recurring thing with Rockstar Games. I mean, I, I, I want to say that they expected to have people play the story of Grand Theft Auto before they played online, but I don't think they micromanaged their time very well with the servers because, I mean, come on, you can't just have it run for at least like a couple hours and then crash. That's just not a way to advertise your company, right? Ah, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, I saw Gravity. And I felt it. <laughs> oh, it's a terrible line. <laughs> Overall, it was a pretty good movie. I felt that uh, the special effects were really, really good. Um, some of the parts were, eh, like, kind of predictable. I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but, um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good movie. I say it's worth, uh, I think, the $8 in the pier now. Well, we saw it Tuesday. Go on Tuesdays in the pier. It's only worth $5 there. Okay, what else? We have talking about Wind Waker HD that just came out. I am a personal fan of the Legend of Zelda games. I think they're amazing. Um, I was really excited when I heard that they were remaking the Wind Waker game, because that's one of my favorites. I mean, it's it looks really good on the Wii U, especially with, um, with the graphic style that it had on the GameCube. Um, let's see. Call of Duty, again. Oh, where do I begin with Call of Duty again? <laughs> um, let's see, even, I think it's just getting old, to be honest with you. It's Call of Duty. But even Activision, oh not Activision, Infinity Ward, even came out on, on uh, I think, uh, the Game Rant, and said, this is what we're doing, we're not going to change any time because it's just what sells. And I think that's kind of bad for because it's really not inspiring anybody else to create anything different. All right, that's all the time we have for you today. We'll see you next time on Media Time. Earlier, we did an official text survey on the most popular horror movies. Here are some of the results. Hi, I'm Joe Nash, and it's getting close to that Halloween season. Let's go ask the kids what their favorite movie is.
I'm here with Andrew Robertson. And what's your favorite Halloween movie, Andrew? Nightmare on Elm Street. Why do you say that? Because it's scary. The Conjuring. Okay, why do you say that? Because it was scary. Friday the 13th. Okay, why do you say that? Because it's scary. <laughs> right on. And what is your favorite Halloween or horror film, James? Trick or Treat. Okay, why do you say that? Because it has more than one episode in it of gory awesomeness. Rocky Horror Picture Show. And why do you say that? Because it's just a classic and I love Tim Curry. My favorite Halloween horror film has to be the original Exorcist movie. Okay, why do you say that? Because uh, I watched it when I was really young and it terrified me. So <laughs> every time I see it, I go back to being, you know, like 12 years old and absolutely scary as ever. I don't really have one, but I really like Alfred Hitchcock. I think he's the greatest. He kind of walks like this and sticks his chest out like this. So Alfred Hitchcock is my answer. Uh, I would have to say my favorite Halloween or horror film is uh, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. It's a, just a good classic horror movie, something I grew up on as a child, and uh, so it just kind of brings back those memories of being a kid. Probably Teeth, because to all men it is probably the most disturbing movie ever. Okay, thank you. Well, there you have it. There are some excellent comments about Halloween movies. And as for mine, I'm going to have to say uh, The Birds by Alfred Hitchcock. That's just wonderful cinematography and just a great film. Back to you, John. Well, that's all the show. Thanks for watching our October episode. Make sure to wear a sweater and buy some food with pumpkin in it. Have a tech day.